as promised, the top 50 games of all time is finally starting. And today we're starting at number 50 and we're moving our way down to number 41. Let's get going. Number 50. At number 50, we're going to start off with an unorthodox racing game. I say that because it doesn't feel like any other racing game I've played as you're racing around the island of Jamaica. Jamaica is a racing game where you're racing around the island of Jamaica and you are taking stuff to port and dropping things off and picking things up and trying to find the quickest route. The cool thing about this game is that it doesn't feel like other racing games where you're just going around in a circle trying not to blow up your car or wipe out your bike or whatever the case may be. You're actually doing something on that path which could slow you down or maybe speed you up if you have the right cards and whatnot. So the uniqueness of Jamaica makes it the first game of my top 50 at number 50. Number 49. Down first take two. All right, so we're going down first take three. All right, so we're going right from number 50, a racing game, to number 49, a racing game. Downforce is a racing betting game. So what you're doing here is you're bidding on your car so that you can have a special ability and what that special ability is. And then you're going to take that car and you're going to race it. You're trying to get first place so you get the biggest payout, but you're also betting on other cars. So just because you don't get first doesn't mean you're not going to win the game. The winner of the game is the one who makes the most money. So you don't want to bid too much on your car at the beginning because that includes the money you're going to have at the end. But you don't want to bid too little and get a bad ability, although none of the abilities are really bad. You don't want to get one of a weaker ability of sorts that you don't really uh, think you will do well with. And then you're going to bid on the other cars. And you do that twice, two or three times throughout the game. You bid on the other cars. And so you'll get a little bit of money that way. And whoever has the most money at the end wins downforce. My number 49. Number 48. All right. And here we are at number 48. Freedom, the Underground Railroad. I enjoy this cooperative game uh, quite a bit. That's why it's my number 48. It should be, a, if you can see it, it's right above my head over here. Um, I like this game because the theme is really a great theme and a really important part of the history of the United States, and I enjoy history, um, especially learning about it and reading about it. And this was, you are trying to help slaves through the Underground Railroad, escape the tyranny of slavery. And you and your teammates are working together to combat that and win out and do your best to save as many people as you possibly can. So this is a fun, excellent co-op that I recommend, and I really enjoy the theme and the history of it as it brings some light to what our <laughs> history here was to go. And that's my number 48. Freedom, the Underground Railroad. Number 47. And my number 47 is Dinosaur Island. I've played Dinosaur Island a couple times. I've played Dinosaur World a couple times. Uh, actually, I think I only played World ones. Um, they're both uniquely different. I think I'm leaning towards Island a little more. World was good, and I enjoy it, but bring when they bring in the cars and you're kind of like building off that extra little settlement area, it's not quite as... It's not quite the same game, so I went with Dinosaur Island here as I enjoyed putting together the DNA of dinosaurs and making dinosaurs and all the fun things that you would do in Jurassic Park. It's... Thematic, 
although not Jurassic Park. <laughs> it is a really fun scientific game that really doesn't bring science to life. So, yeah, so don't pretend like you're going to play this game and learn some things about science or even see some real stuff. I mean, some of it is somewhat true with the clone. Anyways, that's, let's not go there. But Dinosaur Island, fun building game, building dinosaurs through science and DNA. My number, 47. Number 46. All right, and now we're on to my number 46. Another deceitful game. Not a social deduction, necessarily, where there's a traitor anyways, but a deduction game where you're figuring out how much somebody's lying about what they put in their bag because they're trying to bring in counterfeit items in Sheriff of Nottingham. I've always enjoyed this game because, you know, you are putting stuff in your bag and sometimes you don't have counterfeit stuff, sometimes you have nothing but counterfeit stuff, and there's a mix in between. And you just have to figure out what can you put in there? Who's the sheriff this time? How much can I lie to them? How much can't I lie to them? How much will it take for me to get them to not even worry about my bag today? And in the end, I usually... I don't know if I won the last time or not. I'd have to double check. But I don't think I had too much con contraband go through... And I was close. I think I was close to winning. So you don't need to bring through the contraband to win, I don't think. But you definitely have to have a nice mid of cards that you can fool people with. I enjoy always, you know, throwing out that uh, a little bit of money sometimes. And making them think, hmm, he's got something in there. And sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just throw it a little bit to see, oh, no. That's all I got I can afford to give you right now. Just don't look in my bag, sir. And then they're like, no, you got a bunch of money. Let me see. And then, ha ha, there was nothing. I fooled you. Ha ha. That is Sheriff of Nottingham, our number 46. Number 45. Number 45, our next number here. This one is can be very thematic when you're playing it. In the dungeon, with a tornado hovering around your house, and you're playing it somewhat in the dark, but you still need light, and you are betraying someone. That's right, betrayal on haunted hill, betrayal house on haunted hill, no, betrayal at house on the hill. It's the name. There's so many names that are similar to it, including some movies that gets me all tongue twisted, and I have to try and get the name right. So it's Betrayal at House on the Hill. Boom. This game, I know it's been severely hit with it being a little wonky with some of the uh, scenarios. And I agree. Yes, there are some that can be a little off and the rules weren't clear. But let me be clear. That's not why I play the game. I play the game because you're getting together and you're all being friends and co-ops and it's going around the table and then as soon as the dice get to me, even if there's only one omen out there, everybody's scared because they think that the the betrayal is about to happen. And you know what? It has happened before. <laughs> when all I needed to roll was like two or three omen signs and I got none. Or I think maybe I got one. And... I had like six dice, or whatever the number was. So I don't know what is wrong with my dice rolling abilities. But they just stink. We'll do a whole episode one day on how bad my dice rolling is. Uh, I might even want to show you, I'll even probably bring out some uh, videos of how bad it is. Just so you can all see. But this game's fun. You never know who's the betrayer is going to be. Luckily it's not always the person who rolls the bad dice. And then they're just, they get a superpower while the rest of you are just trying to get a couple items and, and attack him or run away and try and get some items and get out of the house in time. And then you're sometimes you got to find a room just to get out. 
and it's just fun. You never know what you're going to get in that game, and that's the beauty of it. You don't know what's coming. You know that some of the scenarios might be a little off, but the game itself, you never know what you have to do or where you have to go because the house always changes. And that's why I like it so much, despite the fact that it's not always a good scenario. You know, balanced scenario, I should say. So, my number 45, Betrayal at House on the Hill. Number 44. My next game that I really like to play, even though some people have said... They don't like the fact that you can go negative, but you know, you don't usually go negative for very long if you do. And that's Brass Lancashire. I've never played the new one, Birmingham. I haven't played that one, so maybe that one would take over. But I, this one's still very good quality. I enjoy getting the oil and moving the, the resources around and trying to get your money and deciding when should I go negative or... Do I want to? Do I even need to go negative at a, at a certain point? Usually, it's early on where you're going negative to just get a loan or something. But that usually doesn't happen. Brass is a fun, resource-driven game where you're just trying to get the resources to build your buildings and get your points. And in that aspect, I really like Brass like Entire. If you haven't played it. You might want to see a review of it. It's a good game. Give it a try. If you don't like it, mainly, you know, that's fine. Uh, it's a heavier game. It's a heavier game. So, with that being said, it's my number 44. And I like heavy games. Sometimes. Number 43. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? The race is about to begin. If you haven't figured out what I was trying to imply there, it's number 43, and it's ready, set, bet. It's, what can I tell you? It's a very popular game as of late. Most people that have been in the hobby for a while know about this game, have tried the game. It's a quick game, 20 minutes. You can get it down to 10 if you got somebody who's just going to blast you the dice and, and kind of moderate the game for you. You can probably get it done in like around 10 minutes because there's three rounds and you're just running the horses to the other end, rolling the dice. There's two through 12. Every time their number gets rolled, they move. You make bets. You, the f quicker you get to the, making the bets, the more money you'll win. So you want to make sure you're betting on the right horse, though. You don't want to just bet randomly on everything. You want to bet on the right horses so that you can make the most money. So there's a balancing act there. Do I want to get down quick on number seven because he's got the most, you know, seven gets rolled the most? Or do I want to wait because who knows? 12 doesn't need to get rolled as much and they can still fly through. So betting game, racing game, all put into one. My number, 43. Ready, set, bet. Number 42. And here we are, down to my number 42. It's just one. Just one is a fun party game where, again, it's very simple. You get out a card. They pick a number. You see one through six on the card. You see whatever number they picked, and everybody at the table is trying to find a different word to give them as a clue to figure out their word. The caveat is, if you have two people with identical words, or one part of, if one person puts fork and the other person puts forks, it's still identical. Plurals don't matter. At least in my opinion, I think that's the way I've always played it. But if you have two identical words, you flip those down so that's two less clues they get if you get identical words. So if you're only playing with like four people, one person's guessing, two people got the same word, one person, they only get one word clue. Maybe it's spoons or spoon. And good luck getting dinnerware out of that. But you might. You could also get utensil. There's still more than one word that you can come out from spoons on. 
that's the fun part of the game is like you trying to be obscure but not too obscure and you don't want to be obscure the same way that person's gonna be obscure and the thought process alone makes it go makes you go crazy and you go ah and then you're having a good time going ah with just one my number 42 we only got one left just one left for today Number 41. And finally, we've reached number 41. And today, we're going to go across the seas to a little known land named England. And then we're going to walk to a little known city named London. But we're not going to get too close to London if it's 1666 because the great fire of London 19 or 1666 just is going down our objective as players are to maintain the fire so that not as much of the city burns and we also want to make sure that if it's going to burn which it will some of it it's not our part of the city that burns that we own because we're rich and we don't care about other people. Not that rich people don't care about other people. Let's just cut that. Because we're rich. And we don't want our buildings, which we own a lot of, to burn down. So somehow we're going to try and flame that fire away from us and our residents in our buildings. So that they don't get hurt. And that is the great fire of London. You and you are battling everybody else. To not have the fires burn down your areas. And in the end of the day. You're going to see. If you can accomplish. Getting the least amount of fire damage. And if you can. You're going to win the game. And winning the game. Is what it's all about. Right after. Fun with your friends. So, that's my number 41, and of course, right as we hit the end, my dehumidifier is going to turn on. Luckily, I don't think you can actually hear that. That means my microphone's doing a good job, and it's a quality enough microphone to block out the humming background noise. But if you hear it, oops, I should have unplugged it or turned it off like I planned on doing. But needless to say... 20 minutes later, whatever this is, I am going to go take care of that. What we have coming up for you is still numbers 30 or 40 through 31 and then all the way down to 1. We also have some reviews I plan on doing. They're coming up here in June. And we also have two more of the Blood on the Clock Tower trilogies coming. Or did I put out the one second one already i don't remember i think we still got two left i don't think these sex and violence with ben burns and jason levine has come out yet but that will be coming out shortly so for those of you who are waiting for those they'll be here if you're waiting for reviews they're also be coming if you're waiting for me to just stop making videos that won't happen because i enjoy just sitting here talking to myself on a camera is kind of weird i should think about what that means about my life until next time we'll catch you right here on the channel the end if i could push pause right now or stop i could i would but you're way over there and i can't so oh look Star Wars Unlimited. I... What do I think about that game? Bye bye now. No, not really. Goodbye. Ah!